Hello everyone and welcome back. Thank you for tuning into my channel. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. This episode marks the beginning of a brand new season here where we are going to use this fake store API to kind of build out a little bit of an e-commerce like application. Um, this is actually came from a request from the community, someone named Farshad, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Thank you for uh, bringing this to my attention and specifically finding this API. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just talk about how the API works, how it looks, and then get into a little bit of code. Uh, and then we're going to uh, obviously evolve the application over time. So specifically why I like this API is that it's free. It's very easy to kind of uh, get up and running. And it's actually seems to be pretty well maintained and pretty well documented here. Um, so the idea here is that there is, uh, let's see, this base API of fake AP, fake store API.com. And then there are a handful of things that you can fetch afterwards. So you have products, we have a cart, there's even user objects, there's even a way to log in. So there's really a lot that we can build out here in this application. Really excited to get going. And with that as well, we are going to use the MVI or Redux like pattern here um, inside of Android to kind of show something else off instead of MVVM. I'm going to use Flow, I'm going to use a whole lot of things that really make this app come together possibly even get into some testing towards the end of it, uh, because we know that that is important here. But uh, let's see, if we go backwards here, we can kind of see towards the bottom, uh, the different endpoints that exist here, right? So you can fetch all the products, a product by its ID, each product has a category, um, something about a particular cart, uh, being able to kind of limit the number of products that we get back and whatnot. So really, really, really good stuff here. Very happy to see it. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think we could jump into a little bit of code here because uh, obviously just reading docs is not all that important, or excuse me, all that interesting. <laughs> it's obviously very important to know what you're doing here. So um, let's go ahead and get started in Android Studio here. I have uh, nothing but a new project right now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this, all right, I'm not very creative for at least names of this application, so we're just going to go with fake store here. We do have our minimum SDK set a little high, as you can see here, only 86.7% of devices. However, Android 8 is pretty uh, recent, in my opinion. Um, you know, we're looking at, I believe, Android 13 in the fall here. So, uh, you know, the majority of people should probably be, uh, you know, 10, 11, 12. So 8 should give us a reasonable place to start. Go ahead and click finish here and the project is going to load uh, up. And while that's happening here, we can flip back over. And I just wanna review the JSON here. So this is the JSON format that we get back from the products endpoint. So we could see that this JSON starts with the square bracket, meaning that it is a list of elements. And then inside here, we have each of our elements. Uh, these are going to be our product objects, has a handful of information here and then even this rating object that allows us to kind of uh, build out a little bit more of an interesting UI. Uh, and then we have, let's see here, the uh, picture along with it. Uh, and as you can see there, that would kind of load right in. So there's a handful of things that we have available to us. Again, categories, so we can kind of implement sorting or, or filtering or something like that in the UI. Uh, really a lot of fun stuff to look forward to here. But um, in order to get started here, because I want to just make this network call inside of the app, we're just going to set up retrofit in a quick and dirty way here, um, just to kind of get things up and running. So uh, if you're not familiar with retrofit, I'm happy to introduce it to you. Uh, there's plenty of content on the channel already for it, but retrofit is basically the way to make network calls inside of Android. Um, if it's not the way, it's one of the top ways. Uh, and this is gonna just be very, very popular amongst all the projects you work on. Uh, but the idea here, at least the base idea here, is we can create some kind of a, a retrofit instance. And the bare minimum we need here is a base URL, uh, which we have, and we can call build because we are working on our builder uh, class here. And then we can uh, actually create a particular instance of what we call a service using that retrofit instance that we created. The service here is defined as an interface, and the interface is where we can declare everything about the actual uh, network request, as in like what type of request it is, a get, a post, a patch, etc. cetera. Uh, and then the actual path to the endpoint, this gets appended here to this base URL. And then we just have a little bit of declaration here around things, 
for that actual network call. Uh, there's a couple annotations that we can put inside of the parameters of these functions to kind of pass additional information into this endpoint. So we'll dive all into that in a little bit here. But most importantly, we need to find the import here in order to bring this into our project. There we are. So we'll copy that. We'll bounce over to our Android application. We will open the module based uh, build.gradle file. We can go ahead and change that. Don't know why it's not already done. Uh, we will paste in our retrofit, and I believe the latest version here is 2.9.0. And just to double check that here, we can go ahead and open up the GitHub project here in another tab. We can take a look at the releases section, look at the tags, and 2.9.0 on May 20th seems to be, well, over two years ago. Um, seems to be the most updated version here. So that's all good. We are ready to go with uh, retrofit there. Go ahead and just comment this stuff. Um, and there is one other thing that we are going to need uh, in order to actually kind of parse things out. So retrofit works in combination with a JSON deserialization serialization library. A very popular one is JSON. However, one that I like a little bit more is called Moshi. Um, and whichever one you decide, right, these are kind of like the handful that they declare uh, or at least recommend, whichever one you decide that you want to use, you actually need to implement or import the converter uh, that goes alongside all of these different packages and libraries and tools uh, so that JSON, sorry, so that uh, Retrofit can actually work um, appropriately. So we can very easy just easily just paste this in. And then what is uh, also worth noting is that this version here is something that is gonna match the base retrofit version. So all of these different converter uh, libraries, just have them match this particular, uh, the, the same version number here. We can also pull this out here into a variable. We can define a variable right here, and then we say that's 2.9.0, and then we have each one of our implementation uh, lines of code actually using that being able to string interpolate that variable inside of there, go ahead and sync the project. This is helpful to kind of keep things clean. And if we were to ever, you know, upgrade this to 2.9.1, it'll ensure that both of these libraries will be updated at the same time. Um, we're obviously not gonna do that right now because that doesn't exist, uh, but we are good to go here. Okay, so popping over to our main activity, we can go ahead and kind of define things here to set things up uh, and actually make our own network call. So we're going to define our retrofit instance here by calling uh, retrofit.builder. And then here we're going to have the base URL, which is something we will fetch in a second. And then we can call dot build. Go ahead and get that base URL. And we're just going to go ahead and paste it in right there, our fake store API.com. And now the last thing that we'll need to do here for our retrofit instance is add a converter factory. This is where our Moshi converter factory comes into play. We're just going to call dot create uh, and, you know, don't pass anything in there and it will work for us. Perfect. So retrofit is ready to go here. It's ready to actually work with our services. So we're just going to go ahead and build one right here going to be called the uh, products service. Again, this is the interface. And then this is where we define the information about the particular endpoints that we care about. So we're going to annotate it with an at get because that's what we're the type of request that we're doing. And then I believe the endpoint is just products. We're going to create this a, as a suspend function. So we can make use of Kotlin coroutines. We're going to then say, uh, let's call it get all products. And this is going to return a retrofit to response of a list. And for right now, we're just going to say any, but eventually this is going to change to our product object to match that JSON that we talked about earlier, right? So now we can go ahead and let's uh, actually make use of it. So we can say product service equals our retrofit dot create. We pass in the products service class here and boom, we have it available to us. Now we just need one little import so that we can make use of coroutines. What we're looking for here is our lifecycle runtime import. So go ahead and copy that, bounce over to our build.gradle. Again, just paste that in. I believe 2.5.0 is the most stable, um, and the other one is uh, an alpha version. 
Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and sync that now. Uh, and then we can very easily do, yep, perfect, lifecycle scope. We'll do launch when started. And then with inside of this coroutine scope that is attached to the lifecycle of this activity, really, really nice stuff. We could very easily just call, let's say, uh, our response is going to be the product service dot get all products. And then from here, we're just simply going to log this information out to see if it is actually working. Uh, so we're going to go with body. Uh, we're going to non-null assert it because we're just assuming that everything is going to work well. But obviously, in a real application, we'll have to handle that. Uh, and then we're all good here. One quick note that uh, you may always tend to forget about is the uses permission for the internet. Uh, we are making a network call, so obviously we are going to need that. Okay, I think that's about it here. We can run this uh, momentarily. So as we take a look here, when the application came up, obviously there's nothing there, but we do have an output here uh, in our data tab. And uh, let's see, can we just, yeah, it looks like it's cut off all the way on the right, uh, but the idea is there, we are fetching correct information. Um, as we could see here, ID 1.0, that's the Fjall Raven fold sack number one backpack. Uh, and if we take a look at the JSON here, we have ID one, the fold sack number one backpack. So uh, it is obviously not that beautiful. We definitely have a, a lot to clean up here, but we do have retrofit up and running. We have created a service. We very simply created a network call. So we know this API is working. And over the next few episodes, we're going to build this application from the ground up 2022 standards, all the best things, all the best libraries, all the best ways to do it wrapped in a different architecture here. So I'm pretty excited. I hope you guys are as well. If you made it this far and if you are interested in the rest of the series, please consider subscribing, like the video to help me out, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good day.